G'day champions, we've got a Orange AD30 here, twin channel. Uh, it's sort of like two amps in one. It's, uh, it's got a uh, GZ34 there, four EL84s, and two independent preamps right up to the phase inverter. Now this one came in with two blown HT fuses and I, I fiddled around with it on the live stream and uh, sort of a bit of guesswork, but <laughs> once that was finished, I got the schematic and, and dug a bit deeper and we found that uh, the rectifier valve was shorted, so we've installed a new one of them. Now this is one of those amplifiers where you don't want to use a standby switch because when uh, the valves are heated and um, that rectifier is ready to conduct, you flick that standby switch, all the capacitance is post standby switch because it only switches on and off the center tap of the transformer. So the rectifier valve gets hit with a big, big surge of current from these, these caps charging up. And uh, over time, it only puts up that inrush so many times and then it gives up the ghost, which is what happened here. So if you've got an AD30 and several other amps, like some of the uh, AC30s, um, you don't want to use the standby switch. Just leave it always on. And then when you turn on the mains, the valves are cold. They'll slowly open up and, and start conducting in a controlled manner and you won't get that inrush that, that smashes the hell out of the uh, poor little rectifier valve down there. So that was the main cause of our woes. I thought it was a shorted uh, output valve initially, um, but I was too busy talking shit on the live stream to, to concentrate fully. <laughs> so uh, we had a few red herrings there. I've sorted that issue, I've powered it up and it's putting out full power, everything's happy, but there's, a, there's an underlying crackling now, which it, I don't know if it was there initially. Um, it's hard to tell because the amplifier was brought in in a non-functional state with blown fuses, so it's sort of my word against the owners. I really like this construction with the uh, the handles on it and the the little uh, guard there. You can you can turn it over and work on it without having to put it on blocks, and it naturally protects its uh, valves without having to remove them. So that's nice. So you can see here, looking at the schematic, you got the rectifier here. It doesn't show the switches because they're hardwired on the front panel. Um, but the switch, uh, the grey goes via the standby switch to ground. Um, so that's the center tap for the transformer, the power transformer, HT tap. Uh, and then there's your rectifier. Uh, so switching that center tap on and off when this is hot means that the inrush presented by particularly this cap here, that one's sort of separated by that resistor there limiting the peak current. But this cap here, the 47 micro, will uh, take a big surge of current from that for a fraction of a second for a few cycles here but that's all it takes to weaken that valve over time and uh, the, the HT fuses will blow as a result now this is the heater fuse not to get confused with the HT fuse the HT fuse is on these violet again not shown on the schematic uh, on these violet uh, well it says violet that's the the color of the wiring going to uh, the board uh, to the valve sorry um, via the board and um, there's a fuse on each each uh, end of that and then standby switch in the center now just to look at the rest of the amp so this is essentially two identical amps there's some value changes throughout but essentially the bones of each channel is the same you can see through here and you you've got separate phase inverters so normally multiple channel amps will have one phase inverter and say two channels of preamp using the same phase inverter that switch at this point rather than at this point this has gone the other way, it's used two separate phase inverters and each of them has a post phase inverter master volume. You can see there, that goes off via, it shows a connector but that's actually hardwired and then there's the other channels hardwiring to the front board which I'll show you in a moment. Those channels are switched via this dual pole relay to the output stage. Now the output stage is four EL84s uh, in a cathode biased configuration 100 microfarad and 150 ohm resistor per side and 220 ohm on the screen grids we, we could up that to 1k for reliability now here's the front panel um, not a lot to show here except individual pots that's uh, that's the master master volumes there which are dual gang pots 1 meg linear and there's the other channel and here's the two tone stacks now there are some value differences in the tone stacks not much but the main one here you've got 150 pico and 100 pico adding up to 250 and here you just got a 150 for the treble and the slope resistor on the clean channel is 91k and it's 68k on the other channel but beside that the circuitry on the other boards pretty much identical per channel 
and here you got your input volumes otherwise you know your gain controls which are mounted on the front panel too yeah it's pretty smart the way they've done this they've got two channels and you'll notice the the pots are offset and you you just think that's like an arty farty feature thing but you look at the bottom side they've just got one circuit board on the front and they've got one channel's pots on one side of the board and the other channel on the other side and of course they've got to be offset so you've got separate footprints for each so that lends itself to having this sort of slope design but still only having one board keeping things simple so that's that's pretty smart I like that so I'll fire it up I'll show you the weird noise we're getting we've got the standby already on so we just flick on the mains we've got the uh, underbench speaker plugged in settling at 50 three watts which is effectively our standby current because uh, the, the valves haven't started to conduct yet and now we're rising we're on channel one we've got everything at 12 o'clock and we'll turn our gain all the way down and I'll, I'll bring up the uh, the master on channel one And as you turn the master down it disappears and you can hear we've got some pretty bad crackling popping and it's slightly increasing as time goes on so I'll just check that cap the silver mica on the uh, tone stack we've got 145 volts on one side and we've got fluctuating voltage centered around 5 volts on the other side just compare that with the other the other channel everything's set midway we've got zero volts on the output and we've got the same 145 ish volts on the input so we've got a leaky silver mica cap so just to show you on the schematic the cap in question is C4 that one there and uh, that's 150 picofarad silver mica and uh, we've got 145 volts here and we've got about 5 or 6 volts here on the other channel we've got about 145 volts here and we've got 0 volts there and that's what you want so there's the culprit down there. Uh, it's that sort of generic SM brand silver mica. Uh, in my experience, they're very unreliable, so I'd like to replace all of them. There's the other channel, those two in parallel. I'd like to replace all of them at once and, and put a more reliable brand in there because I've, I've seen consistent failures or just noise from these this, this brand. I prefer, if you must have a silver mica, one of the Cornell Dublier, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, available from you know Digikey, Mouse, or all the all the big boys, uh, and all the the lower quality uh, distributors will will sell you this one instead. So stay away from the one with the SM printed on it as a general rule. This is a good contender for a really nice ceramic like a V shape. People say they can hear the difference. I would argue that, given a double blind test, they probably couldn't. Um, what you can hear is crackling and popping, so <laughs> I'd stay away from this brand, but we might look at lead time on a Cornell Dublier and see if we can get one of them in. Uh, if not, we'll get a nice Fiche ceramic and put it in its place. Uh, there's no real need to have those in parallel. We could just get a uh, 250 Pico one in, in its place, um, or a 200 Pico, whatever it adds up to. I can't remember the values, uh, but we can get a 150 for that one just to maintain the, the circuit of the tone stack. Right, so there's a look at the front control board and input. Got the new caps in there, new silver micas. Um, I've replaced the parallel one with just one 250 one. And uh, we've replaced the one that was the cause of the noise. So let's uh, get it back together and see if it's quiet now. All right, so I haven't committed to putting the knobs back on just yet. <laughs> I'm not that much of an optimist. Optimist Prime. We'll see if... Uh, She's calmed down and she's quiet now. We'll check that there's no voltage on that wiper. Turn the gain up. That's just the usual gain hiss, but no crackling. So we'll just double check channel two again, and she's good. All right, we'll just check for voltage where it was before. We've got 0, 0.00 volts. The same on the other channel. Beauty. Now there is one more silver mica there. But that's just a bright cap for the clean channel uh, gain control. So there's no high tension across that, no high voltage present on either terminal. So that's not going to suffer the same fate of uh, these these tone stack ones here, whose job is to 
block the DC from the preceding stage. All right, so we'll turn this thing on. I'll have a quick play through it, see what she sounds like. I like these things, I like the tone of them. I think they're reasonably solidly built amps. I'd be pretty happy to buy one if I was in the market for something in the 30 watt range. Just rock tones, doesn't really do metal. <laughs> what Brad's guitar garage repair would be complete without having to clean up some cockroach poop. I think cockroaches should be my new mascot because every single amp I open has got cockroach poop in it. But aside from that, it's a pretty well built birch ply cabinet. It's built up front and back for that chunky look, but all that really does is add weight. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty well built. Got T-nuts there for the handle. Not sealed though, it's just uh, raw birch, but can't have it all, mate. So there you go, champions. I mainly just wanted to release this to correct all the uh, incorrect bullshit I said in the live stream. <laughs> Take everything I say in live streams with a grain of salt, because it, it's uh, it's pretty hard to think straight and talk shit with you guys. But in summary, if you've got one of these amps, don't use the standby. Just ignore it, set it to play, and forget it exists. Turn it on and off with the power, and your rectifier valve will sink you in the long term. So uh, that's been another episode of correcting the wrong stuff I've said on video. So I'll see you on the next one.